everyone. Thank you for coming and joining us. It's, um, well, it's quite a lovely sunny day out there. It has been raining, but I think we're all a bit grateful for that, actually, aren't we? This is Hello Again with Isabel Broom, so called because of my new book, Hello Again, having the same title. See what I did there? Great brain. Um, <laughs> I just thought it would be nice to come on and do some videos chatting to some of my favourite authors, and specifically authors of escapist fiction, the best genre of all, as I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm starting the series with Rosanna Lee, who, if you don't know already, you should, and you should read all her books. And her most recent book is called From Venice with Love. Yes, yes that's right. which has just come out on paperback, is that right? Yes, yes, it was, uh, yes, it's just come out on paperback as of yesterday. Amazing. Yeah. Do you want to start by telling us a little bit about the book? Oh, okay. Um, maybe I should do a quick flash of the book. Yes. Yeah. Which I should have had to hand, but didn't. <laughs> so that's uh, the book. Beautiful. And it's a lovely cover, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, okay, it's about two sisters um, who are very different, Joanna and Harriet. And Joanna is a journalist and she's married and she lives in London. And I think my, I've lost myself on my screen. Ooh. Have you still got me on your screen? Anyway, I can see matter. you, but I can't see you. Your lovely face has <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> oh dear. I've just got my name on there at the moment, but uh, shall I carry on? Ca carry on. You might, yep. Hopefully okay. you'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Things are going so well this morning, aren't they? I know, we've had um, half an hour of uh, trying to get another form of video calling to work and it hasn't worked, so yeah. Yeah. But anyway, let's, let's power yeah. through. Yeah. So, two sisters. Um, yes, so Joanna's married. Um, she's a journalist, lives in London. Harriet uh, lives in West Dorset. And she um, is still living at the farmhouse where they grew up and looking after their eccentric mother. So very different lives. Uh, something happens in Joanna's marriage, which is not good, which I won't go into. And Joanna returns to West Dorset, to the farmhouse. And dynamics, you know, get going. And uh, everything sort of changes for the sisters. Joanna finds some letters in the attic uh, written by this watercolorist called Emmy. And so she goes off on this kind of magical mystery tour, uh, following the, the uh, places that Emmy went to and trying to sort of find out the truth, basically. So she goes to Lisbon and Prague and Venice, obviously. Yeah. And um, yeah, meanwhile, uh, Harriet back in the cottage has a mysterious prowler and is trying to find true love. So that's basically uh, the gist of the story. I love that. Oh, and I love that you've got multiple locations as well. So I've got so to read next. I know because I mine hello again has multiple locations as well. I didn't yes. realize we have that in common. And Lisbon in yes. common. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. And Prague with your, and Prague. your with this book, but with yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean so it is multiple locations, which you know is possibly I don't I don't think it's confusing. I think hopefully you know, it just gives a kind of this idea of this tour that uh, Emmy originally went on uh, at the beginning of the century and now Joanna is kind of going on and it's got a little bit of magic in it as well, which is the first time I've added a little bit of magic. Mm. So a bit of magic realism, which is quite interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a little sprinkling there. How did you choose your locations? Well, um, I love Italy, as you know, yes. and any opportunity to go to Italy and set a book there is always great. Um, I kind of chose them because they've got bridges and one of the themes in the book, I've tried to sort of use bridges in a bit of a symbolic way, I suppose, new mm -hmm. beginnings and sort of crossing over from one life to another, that kind of idea, bridge in time. Uh, as well, and of course, Prague has got the very famous uh, Charles Bridge. Of course, Lisbon yeah. has got, yeah, which you know very well. Lisbon has got, and um, you probably know this amazing aqueduct, which is sort of like a bridge for water from Roman times. And Venice, yeah, there are a few bridges, <laughs> a, few, a few bridges so, in Venice. Yeah, that was the main reason I, I used those, those settings, yeah. Have you seen um, all the pictures that have been coming through of Venice sort of during the lockdown with all the swans and the, the clear water yeah. and the canals? It's 
quite incredible the uh, the difference really oh wow it's just so stunning and someone posted something on twitter a picture which was just so beautiful and it was a rainbow mm. and then the canals and everything was just completely still and quiet and i thought wow wouldn't you love to see it when it's like that but then that's kind of the point isn't that's it that no one's point, there yeah. to see it yeah um, I know the people of Venice have sort of been pushing back for years against all the big cruise ships going in there and, and ruining mm. the kind of backdrop. And because I, I haven't been to Venice since 1999, believe it or not. But even mm. then, I mean, it was absolutely overrun. It was the busiest, I mean, as busy as Rome and Paris. And it's such a small place. It has yes. Hundreds of thousands of people a day. Yes, so it's very busy. It's probably, day, um, it's probably busier than Bournemouth was yesterday. Oh God! <laughs> Which was beaches in the sun. <gasps> God, all those people. Hell. Yeah, all those people <laughs> coming to Dorset. We were like, oh no, no, <laughs> stop right there. I mean, we're sort of beyond. We're West Dorset, and Bournemouth is East Dorset, so um, wasn't quite so bad here. Yeah. Um, but it was that was pretty horrendous, wasn't it? It's almost like a British compulsion, isn't it? Like, um, yeah like men yeah. taking their tops off and tucking them into their waistbands <laughs> as soon as there's a bit of sunshine. It's just, you just walk around and you know that's going to happen. You know, you're going to be yeah. confronted with all these, uh, yes, burly men with their, with their um, tummies sticking out over their waistbands. Yeah, it's always the unattractive ones though, isn't it? I mean, why is, why is that a thing? You know? I know. <laughs> all the Adonises don't seem to pick up on it, do they? Oh, they're too classy, is he? Too classy. <laughs> It's very strange talking to a to a grey box instead of you. <laughs> yes, I don't know what we should do about that. Is there something I should do? I don't know. No, um, I don't know. I don't know enough about Zoom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording just for a moment and then okay. come back. Hang on. Okay, we're back. We're back. She's back. We can see her, I'm which is I am actually here in body as well as voice now. <laughs> I know. That was uh, five minutes of people just having to look at my face. It's too much to ask for anyone. <laughs> it's not as bad as those men that we just mentioned. Um, I was going to ask you actually about lockdown in general and how it's affecting your writing. Because I know a lot of writers have been struggling to concentrate mostly. I mean, obviously mm. we've got lots of extra free time in, in the ways that I don't have to commute into London and back to do freelancing. But I am finding it hard to, to shut out all the noise of everything else that's going on. Are you finding that? No, um, sort of the opposite, really. I, I suppose maybe it's down to sort of where we all live or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I found right from the beginning, um, it was just really lovely to be able to walk around where we live here and not have loads of people around. And, um, you know, just walking onto like deserted beaches and things. It was just mm -hmm. so lovely. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I think I was at the point in the book that I've been writing, which is, you know, not this one that we're talking about, but, but the new one. I was sort of at the point where I really needed to immerse myself in it completely. You know, that bit you get to where sort of near the end where you're just like, Ugh, yeah. and it just becomes kind of everything. And I was at that point. And so because there were fewer distractions, I was able to, to just plunge into it mm. and focus on it. And, and so that's what I did. And I was really relishing the, the tranquility. But having said that, and that's a big part, isn't it? You know, thinking about all the, um, the challenging times, the, you know, tragic in some cases and sad and all the awful anxiety and everything, all the bad stuff about lockdown is obviously there. But I think I was able to sort of just switch it off for a while and immerse. And then when you come back into it and you watch the news or something, yeah then yeah. it all sort of kind of comes back so so it's a sort of double-edged thing for me is what I'm trying to say yeah it's great that you that you managed to do that I, mean, I found that at the beginning as well actually that I was just so determined not to to get drawn in and sucked into everything that was going on because it was just so awful in those early days yes. wasn't it? Um, it was almost too awful wasn't it and I yeah. and I think if you watched the news too much yeah. or read too much about what was happening you, I don't know about you, but I just got so anxious about everything. Yeah, it was really I, frightening. 
It never really to... felt like anyone was in control at any time, did no. it? We don't, <laughs> the government can't trust them, so it doesn't help. Exactly. You think Christ, you know. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think you know we as writers, and I don't know if it was harder for some people than others, but we're fortunate in that we have this sort of other world, you know, that we can escape into. And and I think that's one of my husband's sort of favourite phrases he sort of says it's all right for you you've got another world to escape into yeah oh that's so true and, <laughs> and in this case it did feel like that yes it felt okay i can't cope with that at the moment so let's go to this world instead and the same with reading really you know reading books like yeah. your book and you know that kind of escapist fiction that we're talking about is just so great because you can get away from not only the the boring stuff and the you know but also the problems the anxieties and all the stuff that we're all going through and here we are you know we can go to somewhere completely different somewhere interesting and exciting uh, but but in a positive way with yeah. people who sort of feel like real life characters because they've got their own you know their own issues and their own kind of things going on and so you get involved in their story like I did when I read your book and you know it's wonderful because you're in that other world and you're thinking about real life issues but you're away from basically covid yes <laughs> all that horrible stuff yeah and, and people have been reading more haven't they in lockdown i mean i know I it's, so. the sort of physical sales of books have dipped a bit but in terms of people coming back into reading ebooks and and rediscovering that kind of love for, I mean, the weather's helped massively because people do just want to yeah. sit out in the sun, don't they? Yeah. So much Netflix yeah. you can watch. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah, I could read a book. And I think <laughs> especially, hopefully, this is what I'm hoping, because people can't get away for their holidays, um, yeah. certainly as easily as they, I know they're relaxing quarantine in July, so people will go away, but I think a lot of people won't because they're still going to be worried about, you know, what's going to happen because things are changing so often. But at least with oh, our books, yeah. we can take them, whisk them off somewhere, almost like they're having a holiday within the exactly. book. Exactly. And they can just go to Bournemouth and read the books. <laughs> no, don't go to Bournemouth. <laughs> just sit next to, oh no, I don't even want to think about it. Poor no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, that we call it escapist fiction. Mm. And, you know, obviously it is, because as you say, we're taking readers to somewhere completely different. But I think also, it's also kind of realist fiction in a way because mm. it is about uh, people who are who just seem who just seem very real. I think Definitely. so. That's quite it's quite interesting, isn't it? But um, I mean, I've certainly been doing loads of reading, loads of reading, Thank and you. it's been really good. Yeah, I hope people are reading more. You know, that would be great. Did you have and any younger book today booked for during during the lockdown? Any holiday book, missing any travel? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I've 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 missed um already uh, a trip to Copenhagen where my um, mm. son and his family are, mm. and they were supposed to be coming to us, which has also been cancelled. My writing holiday, which I do every well twice a year usually in um, Andalusia, uh, that was due in July. So that's obviously been well. We postponed it to October, but who knows whether we'll be going yeah. or not just don't know and I'm supposed to be going on a um, really nice holiday that I was looking forward to to Italy in September and I don't know whether that's going to happen or not could either could happen could happen I suppose it depends doesn't it just this is the thing yeah. you just don't know week week to week no you just have to play it by ear really what about you I was supposed to be in Croatia in uh, oh, going to try and go for most of June so yeah Oh, but obviously oh. I got New Zealand in just before lockdown. In fact, I sort of overlapped it. I almost got stuck in New Zealand. Yes, I know. I, yeah. I saw that. My I mean, that was cancelled. Um, that must have been really much. worrying for you. Yeah, I mean, there's worse places you can get trapped. <laughs> I would have been yeah. absolutely fine, and I would have been living a completely sort of free and safe life by now if I was still there. But I think because because it was such an unknown and because it was at that time it was felt like it was spiraling down very sort of frighteningly rapidly um mm -hmm. i thought if i stay here i don't know it could be a year before i can get home it could be you know i just didn't yeah. know and i wanted to be at home with the family yeah i, think that was I totally under i totally understand that you just want to get home don't you 
Yeah. Um, but I think the um, New Zealand Prime Minister uh, oh, has amazing. dealt with it so well. She's amazing, isn't she? Yeah, so she's amazing. dealt with everything so well. Um, and so they've actually, yeah, that's it's pretty good now over there again, isn't it? It's made me want to go there actually, um, yeah. seeing some of your pictures and hearing about it's it. Really beautiful. It's so beautiful. It really was it lovely. Yeah. It's a long flight, yeah. but you know, it's. Yeah, you, I mean, you can break it, I suppose. I went yeah. through, the both times I've flown, I've gone through Dubai, which is a bit of a, right. not my favourite route to travel, but it's kind of the quickest and a lot of mm. the cheaper routes go that way. But um, I flew back via America on the way back and I was like, well, I'd go this way the other way. Because you could go to LA on the way or Miami on the way or even Canada and go that way mm. down. So you could sort of break mm. your trip up, maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But yeah, New Zealand did feel a long way away when I was sitting in the airport mm -hmm. and I couldn't get back. And I was like, it's not, it's not like you're in France or, you know, no. just across the water, you've got, you're looking at, you know, a day's travel on several yeah. flights. So it was quite scary. But, um, yeah, I can imagine. That's yeah. the sort of risks you take, I suppose, when you travel. Well, yeah. It hasn't, yeah. Me off. it hasn't scared me off. No, it hasn't scared me off. I mean, I think, you know, I just feel like I'm still a traveller and I can't wait to sort of carry on, really. Yeah. Um, love it. Love seeing different places and experiencing different cultures. It's amazing. Do you have a favourite location? Because you've written lots and lots of books now, set in lots and lots of different places. I wanted to ask, do you have a special favourite? Well, um, definitely Italy is my favourite. But I... I think if if it was if the question had been most memorable, I probably might have said Burma. Oh wow! Um, for Return to Mandalay, because that was that was just so other, you know, if you know yeah. what I mean. It was just I'd never experienced anywhere like that, and things like going to see the Shwedgon Pagoda in um, Yangon, and just experiencing the atmosphere and the tranquility and just watching the setting sun and the incense is burning and it, it was all so incredibly um, lovely and peaceful. And so I, I did love that, but Burma also was quite challenging um, as a traveler for me, I found it quite challenging. So Italy is like my favorite location. I would go there in a heartbeat at any time really. Yeah. Maybe not now this yeah. second. <laughs> I haven't seen enough of Italy. I've sort of done a few of the cities, the main cities, when I was travelling yeah. a long time ago. Um, but, you know, so, since I've turned 30, I've only been to... God, where have I been? I don't think I've even been into... Apart from to Lake Como, Milan, I haven't been anywhere else. I really do need to get on that, don't I? Yeah, maybe that's the next uh, destination then. Um, yeah. Next book, perhaps, after yeah. the one that you're writing. <laughs> yeah I do have Canada in the bag but Canada is very much because I went in the winter it's yeah really sort of covered in snow and so beautiful and it's that element of it that sort of cold yeah element of it that I'd want to write about and my books at yeah. the, moment, the scheduling is summer so I'm picking warmer climes really for my, yeah. for my settings but I haven't forgotten Canada I want no to. no don't forget Canada I mean that's that's incredible as well as a place isn't it yeah yeah but as you say in the winter time Italy is much more of a sunshine summer type destination Definitely. west coast busy west head for the west coast I'm gonna have to get some tips from you <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll send you a map and this is where you have to go yes. <laughs> but I haven't explored the um Sorry, I haven't explored these, the south, southern Italy very much. I haven't been to Puglia, for example, oh, I which does, um, yeah, really good wine, yeah. primitivo, yeah. Yes. And um, well, maybe I could so go, I'd like to go there. when I go to Croatia, maybe I could just work my way back up around. Oh, yeah. Italy, yeah, you'll be really close. Really you can just pop yeah. over. Yeah. Well, that's what everybody says Croatia is like um, sort of the best of, Italy and the best of Eastern Europe and the best of Greece all mixed together. So yeah, I think I'm going to love it for that reason. <laughs> yeah, it's very beautiful. I think the islands got apparently very beautiful islands. I've, I have yeah. been only once and that was to Dubrovnik, went to one little island near Dubrovnik mm. and that was absolutely beautiful. So I'm sure all the rest would be incredible. Yes, yeah. I can't wait. I was, yeah, I've been reading a lot about it and watching a lot of travel documentaries and vlogs and trying to immerse myself in the location so I can write about it. But until I get there, I just can't, you can't 
I think, I don't know about you, but you have to have been to the places that you're writing about. Otherwise it oh, just definitely. doesn't, it yeah. feels like you're writing, I don't know, like you're looking at a picture and writing about a picture rather than looking at yeah. being there. Well, I totally agree. Picture. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think things happen which you can't possibly sort of um, yeah. anticipate and something happens and then you think, oh yeah, you know, that sort of fits in so well. And you just get that kind of flavour, that atmosphere, don't you, when you when you visit a place, which no matter how much you read about it, it's just not yeah. the same. Because I think every place makes you feel differently as well. Well, yeah. And it has a different effect on, on just your mood, depending on the atmosphere of the place. Because some places yeah. I've been, I haven't loved, I've felt quite uncomfortable in, and it's kind of about unpicking why, that, why you have that feeling and what it's about. Like, obviously, yeah. this has always been very close to my heart, and I think yes. I know that from reading my map of you. And the type of story that is, is about somebody who's, you know, sort of lost, finally finding where she should be, um, yes. how I feel about Greece. But I, I felt similarly about New Zealand, and I think that's why I ended up writing a story about a girl finding, you know, her place in the world. Um, yes. Whereas with the others, it's slightly different. But it yes, is so unusual, well, isn't it, how a place gets under your skin. Yes, exactly. And it, and so, as like you've just been saying, it really affects the story as well as the, as well as your own mood. But it affects the plot and everything, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 So I'm going to have to go to Croatia, even if I end up quarantining. <laughs> well, yes, you're <laughs> going to have to go. Yes. <laughs> There'll be a How stop. soon can you go? I mean, you may be able to go in September or October. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really mind if it's if it's cold, as long as I get some sunshine and I yeah. can see what it's what it's like. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be hot. I'm not no. going for the sunbathing and the swimming. I'm going for the, just for the vibe, really. Yes. <laughs> the researching. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. I'm sure it will be before the end of the year. I'm going to stay positive on that one. Oh, yeah, definitely. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> right, I was going to ask you some quick fire questions at the end of our chat. Okay. On the holiday vibe. Just, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll, start with a, we'll start with your dream destination. This is like okay. money is no object. You can go anywhere in the world. Where yeah. Top of oh. the bucket list. Um, I think I would probably go to South America. I'd probably go. I've never been to South America. I would really like to go to Peru and um, Argentina. And yeah, I'd like to just do sort of a tour all round. Um, my older daughter did that. She just went off on her own, um, sort of backpacking around South America, right. which I wouldn't do that. <laughs> mine would be, mine would be something really comfort. <laughs> mine would be in comfort, a relative comfort anyway. But uh, yeah, I think it would probably be that. Yeah. Or maybe New Zealand, now that you've talked about New Zealand, yeah. actually, I want to go there too. You should. Yeah. South mm. America's on my list as well, very high up. I think everyone that I know that's been there has absolutely mm. loved it and has nothing but amazing things to say. Same. My, bro my brother yeah. spent some time in Central America as well at the sort of tail end of last year and over the new year um, yeah. around sort of Guatemala and El Salvador and places like that. And I'd like to see those as well, actually. Oh, I bet that's really interesting. Yeah. 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 Completely different world mm. over there. Mm. Um, right. So what's your unusual holiday essential? Obviously, passport, money, etc. But something that <laughs> might be slightly odd. <laughs> Not odd, but <laughs> okay. um, yes. All right. Well, mine would be a packet of Roy Bosch tea bags. Ah, amazing! <laughs> you have because to. You wouldn't just take this to New Zealand, by the way. They don't let you take tea in. <laughs> oh yeah, well, you wouldn't need them there, would you? Because no. they have lots. They have no. amazing tea coffee there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Places are better now, and more places do have Roy Bosch tea. When I first started drinking it, which was many, many years ago, it was impossible to get it anywhere, mm. um, apart from, where did I get it from? I must have just got it. I don't know, but there were a few places, but not many places that, that um, you could get it, and certainly not in cafes or anything in this country. It was so unusual. Whereas now, you know, it's most places actually sell it, so it's not, but when you go abroad, like somewhere like Italy or Spain, for example, is you still can't find it. So um, yeah, I would take that because I just don't drink black tea at all, and that's what I drink, and it's you know I like it. So I would take that along with the obviously, as you say, the usual stuff. 
the sunblock. Or when you can't have a tea. That, that does sound a really British thing to say, isn't it? But yes. even when I go to Greece and that you order a cup of tea and they bring it with the, the milk that's out of a can, you're like, no, it's yeah. wrong. <laughs> It's, and it's the sort of the colour of wrong seal. You're like, yeah. And you drink yeah, and anyway because you have to. Exactly. It's like grained into your brain. You have to, have to yeah. start the day with a cup of something warm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, isn't it? Well, I think disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so that they, just my... don't, they don't offer you milk with a sort of a regular tea. No, it's that's cool. right. You just get a, one of those yellow, what are they, Lipton bags or something? Yeah. Just black. They just Black don't tea. understand. Yeah. No, no, Germany, it's really hard to get tea in Germany. I found yeah. when I was in Hamburg. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? I can't get a British That's quite surprising. Yeah. yeah. So it's really weird, actually, when you think about it, that the UK is just so obsessed with tea to the extent <laughs> yeah. that people drink it so much. <laughs> and other countries just don't have it, do they? Don't get it. I wonder how many what? anxious slightly worried cups of tea have been drunk in lockdown <laughs> like 4,600 per person easily yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like mm, mm, news is a bit bad should we should we have a cup of tea have a cup of tea then yeah. it'll be a lot better then it yeah just, just have a cup of tea yeah <laughs> it helps <laughs> what can we do it's, it's built into us yeah. um what kind of books do you read on holiday oh well i do read i do like um psychological thrillers and that kind of genre is probably my favorite genre to read i also like escapist fiction of course because that is the best genre yeah um what else do i read um yeah so i think uh at the moment i'm reading uh mike gale's new book oh, which is called fun. it's just about to come out it's called um oh i can't remember the name of it now something about the lonely not not the lonely always the lonely what's that song there's a beatles song that's got lonely in it um only, it's not only the lonely no all the lonely people all the lonely people, all the lonely people. Where do they all i've come? not been sent a proof hint, hint. yeah um but yeah i know i had to hint to get one oh, someone I'll else had one and i was like where's mine <laughs> so i started reading that's really good and i'm reading um joanne harris as well who I really like. I quite like her when I'm on holiday because she's just so good at description. Yes. Um, yeah, and she's just not, she's quite a good one to read just before you go to sleep because she doesn't, you know, you won't get, it sounds, it sounds like a criticism. I was going to say you won't get too excited, but I meant that as a, it sort of lulls you because it's quite poetic and beautifully right. written. And yeah, if you go to bed with a Louise Candish or something, you're not going to go to sleep. Yeah. Well, so you're just going to keep yeah. reading it <laughs> And that's another one. I, haven't, I really can't wait to read her new book because oh, that just looks fantastic. It's really fabulous. Really and you know how much I love Louise Candish. She's one of my favourite authors. Yes. So, always, um, there's always a point in her books where I just gasp with shock. And yes. I'm like, you've got me again. Damn you. Oh, no, she's so twisty, coming she? at all. She's so twisty. How does she, I mean, you, you, I've never met her, but you know her, and she, yeah. yeah, how does she do all that twisty, twisty, twisty plot thing? That's so clever, isn't it? It's just clever. I think she's yeah. a mistress of kind of only giving the reader enough to, that they need. So you feel yeah. like you're getting all the confidences of a character when actually you're only getting what the character is choosing to show yeah. you. Um, so which is so true to real life as well when yeah. you know somebody mm. and then they some they do something that throws a complete curveball and you think oh my god i never would have yeah. thought they'd done that she can write those characters basically very really that's great isn't it it's a really there. really great skill it is I, I don't it's i tried to write a, an unreliable narrator for the first time um a few books ago in um little theater by the sea mm. and that was quite interesting because i've never tried that before and actually, that was quite fun, yes. you know, being able to actually kind of lie. <laughs> and then sort of everything's revealed at the end, you know, and yeah, so I, I really Durant like that. Idea. The one that's, that's really good at those. Have you ever Sorry, read who? Bean Durant? No. She wrote Lie With Me and um, the one that I'm reading at the moment is called Finders Keepers, which is out in July. And she oh, yeah. is very similar to, to Louise Candish in her sort of character study. And the books are, I think you would love Lie With Me. It's one of my favourite books of the past few years. And it's oh, yeah. Really, no, I must definitely, I must definitely, definitely get that. Yeah, sounds really good. Yeah. yeah. And I like, um, also like Lisa Jewell. Yes. I think she's yeah. really good. 
she's quite twisty as well isn't she yeah i love how she's kind of her genres have kind of merged they've gone from sort of women's fiction around darker darker yeah. darker, darker darker and now they're um, I know. psychological that's amazing i remember when she um first brought out uh i think it was, was it ralph's party oh, that's the first yeah. one and you know she, she was so good at writing that kind of book but then the, as you say they just got darker and darker and i was actually enjoying them more and more i do like a bit of dark yeah um yeah so so probably i would read that kind of i think i'm quite sort of i'm quite wide i, I like some literary fiction as well i like people like um, maggie o'farrell mm. um so i just yeah i like lots of different authors really and genres it's it's great to have different types of book for different moods, isn't it? And I think reading on holiday, you're at your most relaxed. And you, can oh, yeah. read, and you don't have that sort of little nagging voice saying, I'm really enjoying reading this, but I should probably go and empty the dishwasher. You exactly. know, you can actually just enjoy lying there and being completely immersed and getting swept yeah. in the story. Guilt free. I always think when readers say that they're saving my book for their holiday, that's like the ultimate compliment because I'm like, oh, the thought of being read on a beach just makes me feel you're absolutely right joy you know yeah you're absolutely fun. right that's just so nice isn't it i mean yeah and i do that i do save books for when i'm going away yeah definitely yeah i think it's lovely it just gives you that real sort of something special to look forward to doesn't it yes definitely yeah um, yeah i was going to ask you where was your mm. first ever holiday first ever holiday first ever holiday first First ever holiday abroad or first ever holiday um, in this country? Both. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean when I was a child? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So first ever holiday was probably Devon or Cornwall Day. with my parents. Yeah. When <laughs> we all went there, didn't we? <laughs> oh, first probably, I don't know, maybe about four, three or four, something like that. I think that was about the time that um, my parents bought a car with um, a little A40. And um, it probably took all day to get there. Yeah, <laughs> it took all day to get there now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, to get to Bournemouth. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> Bournemouth is like the running gag today, isn't it? It is. Yeah, uh, yeah so that was, and first one abroad. Um, mm, oh, I've forgotten this. I went on a cruise when I was about 14 or 15 with my school. And that was really such good fun wow. because obviously you're surrounded by your mates yeah. and we, and it was this, we went to all these, we went to Russia wow. and yeah, <laughs> we went to um, Leningrad and Moscow on a, on a, a, well, to Moscow on a like overnight sleeper thing Damn. on these really, really hard beds with, it was just a really weird experience. And I had to let down my, my, school dress because it was too short <laughs> um, before we were allowed to go into Moscow wow. um, and we went to Finland and uh, Norway and all on the same cruise Sweden um, all these places and I can still remember how much it cost 65 pounds <laughs> <laughs> for some reason I just really remember that figure because I had to save up quite a lot of it myself in my paper rounds <laughs> <laughs> and and I used to work in a in a in a shop Saturday mornings as well. Yeah. So I saved up all the money that I could and paid. And I think my parents probably paid what you know whatever was left. And it was just I'm sure I didn't appreciate any of those places, Izzy, because yeah. I was just liking the discos in the evening, you know, really on board. That was the most fun thing in a way. It probably <laughs> set off your sort of intrepid explorer side there a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> And it probably made the sort of bigger, wider world feel less daunting, I suppose. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I, trips yeah. at that I end. don't know. I mean, it, it was just, when I think about it now, I just, I think, you know, what a fantastic experience that was. What an opportunity, because mm -hmm. I didn't go abroad again until I was, I think I was in my 20s, early 20s. Um, and that, then it was Spain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it's lovely, but, That's you know. Standard one, it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, something different but to have that opportunity you know at that age to go on um, the and it was quite common to go for schools to go on those school cruises in those far off days yeah yeah you won't remember that because you're too young but <laughs> what, what were we talking I don't think about? we actually went on any school trips like that um, abroad. I think it was probably around 1970 
1971, that kind of time. And um, it was just, I just loved it. I wasn't homesick at all. I just absolutely had such a good time. The traveller spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to hear that. <laughs> Tell my mum that. <laughs> no, I would happily go away for sort of months at a time. Yeah. I was travelling around Europe when I was 19. I just, I was working at a cinema and I just had a bad day and I was like, I'm going to go and book a round Europe ticket. So I just did a really? sort of interrailing and interbussing, just wow. on the phone, really. On um, your own? On my own, yeah. Wow, um, that's very that, interested, yeah. Yeah, but it was, I ha it had its ups and downs, and I had sort of moments where I was a bit scared and felt a bit isolated, but um, mm. I think it set me up, definitely. And I think knowing that you can spend time alone in that way is really good. Like for yes. me, I, I love going on holidays with my friends, but when I'm doing my book research trips, I do tend to always go alone. Yeah. Actually, yeah. when I was researching um, Lisbon, I went to Lisbon for Hello Again, and I went with a man that I just started dating, and it was such a mistake. <laughs> 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 I was like, so frustrated because obviously you have to, you know, it was nice and we could go out and do the dinner thing and the more romantic yeah. thing, but I just wanted to just walk around and absorb everything and just sit down when I wanted to sit down. And I had to think about him all the time. Never. Oh God! Never again. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I totally, I totally get that. I mean, I go away with my husband um, on research trips, but he, but you know, we've been together a long time, and he's sort of learnt that how I operate. Yeah. And it's like I'm making notes all the time, or as you said, you want to sit down, you want to absorb something, and you know, he'll just go off and talk to someone because he likes talking to people. Oh, and I like to sit there with my notebook. So yeah. that's okay. It works, it works. And he takes loads of photographs. Oh, so I don't have to worry about doing that at the same time. So that's good. But I can imagine going with somebody who I didn't know very well and like having to yeah. think about them, as you just said. <laughs> that would be yeah. awful. Bless him. He's not, he wasn't a bad guy at all. It was just, I shouldn't, I uh, should never have invited him. I should never, you know. I should never let that happen. I should have been stricter. It's so tempting though, isn't it? I've so learned. Tempting. I've learned. Yeah, because I've done research not... bits with my friends and it's been fine. I think it is because yeah. you can say to them, oh, I just need half an yeah. hour to yeah. Do, yeah. do what I need to do. That's right. I think it's about going with somebody who you feel comfortable with. And like you said, you can just tell them that you need to do this. You, need, you do need to be really kind of selfish and absorbed when you're on a research trip, don't you? You just have to be. Because otherwise you're not going to get, I mean, sometimes I actually want to write the scene, the whole scene in situ, yeah. you know, in, in a notebook kind of thing. And you can't do that if there's someone who's sort of looking at their watch and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, their foot. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Have you finished yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I think if you're not an author, an author is a mystifying creature to people that, you know, that don't write, that don't really get it. Um, yeah definitely yeah. yeah it is a weird I mean I always say I always take it back to the basics and I think we basically get paid to make up stories about people you know that don't exist yeah. it is it is yeah. quite bizarre <laughs> amazing bizarre. But, bizarre. but yeah, yeah I wouldn't change it no me neither me neither so <laughs> let's finish can you give us any little hints about the book that you're writing at the moment just as a as yes a finishing Actually. nugget yeah, because I've, I've actually um, more or less finished it now. Well, I have finished it. I don't know why I said more or less. But I it. <laughs> I've, it's called The Orange Grove, and it's set oh, in Seville. Lovely. And um, we went to Seville for the first time. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, and I really, enjoyed, I really enjoyed writing it. So, um, yeah. I'm is, that really, the, is that spring? That will come out in hardback in the spring. Yes. And in paperback in the summer but yeah. at the moment people can get a copy of from venice of love in paperback yes hold it up again have you oh, got it in hand okay. but we'll finish by holding our books up <laughs> okay. there we go here are our books, our books. they are the best yeah. buy them immediately available now so you can buy rosanna's and read it and then buy mine on the 9th of july <laughs> and read that off perfect afterwards. timing perfect, perfect timing, timing. <laughs> yeah that, yeah. right, like, I'm just going to uh, stop recording, but don't go anywhere so I can say goodbye. Okay. To, we'll say goodbye to everyone else. So thanks for okay. coming and watching, everyone. Bye.